Okay, I think I found... Um, yeah, I found the warrior record thing, so we can look at that. Uh, whoa. Can I just read all of them? Is this for each of them? Like, if I click on Soji, what happens? Okay, so I don't know anything about any of you guys. Maybe you only unlock it once you've done their route or something. I thought that that was a thing I got. Uh, maybe it's just like, oh, now that you are in the game, the warrior record is unlocked, but you have to do stuff before it's actually unlocked. The other thing I wanted to do is that you can, um, you can see some of the stuff that I wasn't able to get. Let's see. Okay, so I read his. So the ones that I wasn't able to click on, I can come back and uh, and read them here. So I'm gonna. Okay, I read about Saito. I read about Toto. House. Oh yeah. I'm like, what about a house? Um. Okay, let's see. East of me. We read about East of me. Um. Read about Sanan. We read about that. Did we read about? Yes, that's my. That's my dear old dad. Uh, let's see. Do 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 do. Scrolling, scrolling. Uh, the protagonist, Roni. Now this is one I wasn't able to read in the very first one. So Ryojin Matsumoto is a respected doctor working for the Takagawa Shogunate. That's why I went to Kyoto. Um, Harada. Okay, that was one of the guys I couldn't read about. So he's captain of the Shinsengumi's 10th division. He's a native of Edo. He is very skilled with the spear, which is his weapon of choice. There is a scar on his stomach from an attempted suicide. Oh, so he actually did go through with it, but it didn't, uh, it didn't stick, as uh, Shintachi so very eloquently put it. Um, and is there any other ones that I've missed? No, I think I've got, I think I got everybody. There's a lot to read about. Anyway, all right. Let's continue on, shall we? There I was, surrounded once again by the leaders of the Shinsengumi. I noticed you were rather slim, and your features were far too soft to be a man's. But to think you were a lady this whole time. Kondo was nodding his head repeatedly, as if he were agreeing with a very intelligent suggestion. <laughs> For him to notice the softness of my features, it flattered me a bit. <laughs> I guess? Sure. Why not? Everyone else is like, ah, chief. Once you know she's a girl, she really doesn't look like a boy at all, does she? So we bound her and left her for the whole night. Oh dear. Very ungentlemanly of you all. Well, she claims to be a girl, but it's not like we have any actual proof, right? P proof Proof? Really? Not obvious enough for you, huh? All right, will you feel better if I strip her down? Why are you volunteering for this? Chief, break this up now. No, you absolutely will not. To suggest such a thing is preposterous. I just figured it was the quickest way to settle the question, but I won't force it. <laughs> well, if you really are a girl, then killing you would just feel kind of wrong. Uh-huh. Why are you so naive? It doesn't matter. If we have to kill her, she dies. I'm feeling the love. Exactly. However, her gender is irrelevant. Killing in general is wrong. We were organized to protect the citizens of Kyoto. We would ill serve the public good by murdering civilians in cold blood. And what do you have to say about all this? Yeah, yeah. 
But if this girl or boy is a threat to the peace, that's a horse of a different color. Nay. The Shin Sengumi had already suffered a very gruesome reputation in Kyoto. If rumors spread that their men were thirsty for blood, things weren't likely to go well for them. Kyoto would banish them, and with no one to protect the people, the city would erupt into chaos. Each of their members deeply understood the consequences of behaving rashly in these times. My apologies, but I took the liberty of checking through your belongings. It would appear you came all the way from Edo. By yourself. You didn't seem to have much. Some clothing, some pocket change, a few letters, and the sword. One of the letters was from Ryojin Matsumoto, a shogunate-approved doctor. I assume you saw him. I don't like that the music stopped. What is your purpose, Chizuru Yukimura? The minute my name was spoken, the vibe in the room shifted immensely. I take it something is going on. My dad's involved with something. And they're all like, Yukimura? That's why I can't change my last name. Everyone wore a stunned expression, eyes wide, and no words were uttered in response. Until. My, 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 those eyes. Wait, Hijikata. That name. Hey now, this can't be a coincidence. No, wait a moment. We only need to determine if you are a threat. Will you tell us your side of the story? At Kondo's behest, I stood up to speak. My name is Chizuru Yukimura. Under the watchful eyes of the leaders, I sharply described how I came to face them. How I lived in Edo. How I'd come to Kyoto to find my father. How lonely the city felt before I arrived. Oh, then you're from Edo as well. And you came all the way to Kyoto to find your father? So, who is your father? My father is Kodo Yukimura. So, the dots are connected. What are you talking about? The handwriting within the letter does indeed match Kodo's, but... To think, you were Dr. Kodo's daughter. You know my father? What the hickey hay is going on? The silence was enough to tell me that the revelation of my parentage caused a pronounced change in their behavior. So, you've been withholding information from us. Huh? What information are you talking about? There's no point in lying to us now. Out with it. What the hell are you doing in Kyoto? I... I just came to look for my father. I swear, I don't know anything else. You came to the city fully aware of what your father, Kodo, is doing. I was only aware of my father being in Kyoto for his medical work, but I haven't seen him since last summer. That's all I know. Hijikata, it may be better for us not to press, because she may not know anything after all. So, what do you know about my father? Where is he right now? Please, tell me. The Shinsengumi is currently attempting to determine the whereabouts of Dr. Koto Yukimura. You're after my father? So, this means... Oh no, you've got us all wrong. We're not, uh, after him. I see. A huge wave of relief came over me. But... He's a fellow supporter of the Shogun, but... Well, he sort of disappeared a little while ago. There is a reasonable chance that the enemies of the Shogun have identified him as a threat. Ah! I let out an audible gasp, but Sayato continued without paying me any mind. 
There is, of course, the chance he's still alive. Doctors skilled in Western medicine are quite rare. Okay, so he's valuable to either side. I wasn't sure what else to do, so I nodded. My heart pounded in my chest, threatening to burst onto the floor. So now what? Kandu, what do you make of her situation? Would it be in our interest to help her, seeing as we are all looking for the same person? What exactly do you mean, help her? I only mean to say we should cooperate with her until we find Kodo. With her assistance, I'm sure our chances of locating Kodo will increase drastically. Huh? How am I of help? I don't even know the area. Looking for him may prove fruitless, however. If he's in disguise, spotting him will be difficult. You are his daughter, however. You ought to recognize him no matter how he may have disguised himself, yes? Yes, of course. I nodded as I spoke, while giving him what I hoped seemed like a steady, reassuring smile. Besides, having her stay with us, regardless, can be of use to our headquarters. How so? Hmm, what do you say, Toshi? Sanon is making a lot of sense. If it turns out that she doesn't know anything after all, then... It's true! All I know is that my father headed to Kyoto, but I don't know anything else. And about last night, I didn't see anything. Well, if she is his daughter, we can't really kill her, can we? His eyes narrowed as he looked down at me. If you promise to keep last night a secret, we'll let you stay until your father is found. Fair. I promise that the Shinsengumi will do whatever they can to help you find Dr. Kodo. Th thank you so much. What a weird set of circumstances that has led me here into the situation. Yeah, I'd never imagined something like this. I was elated to have escaped death, but not only had I survived, but I'd found my first decent lead. Who would have thunk it? You must be glad we won't be killing you, huh? Well, we won't be killing you just yet, at any rate. He gave me that same wolfish grin. There was no denying that my situation was still less than desirable, but it didn't matter for now. Yes, I'm very glad. Meh. Against all odds, at last, I'd found help where I'd never have expected it. The Shinsengumi. My first day in Kyoto was quite the adventure. In spite of everything I'd seen, my fortune was improving with every step. I still had a long way to go, but keeping positive was my only hope. Aren't you relieved, Yukimura? It's a pleasure to have you. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure for me as well. <laughs> uh. Hey, Gen. With her being a lady, after all, I'm not sure that our all-male household is equipped for her needs. You bring up a good point. What would you have me do? Kondo crossed his arms and thought deeply. <laughs> hmm. Should you require anything, you need only ask. We will do what we can to accommodate you. Thank you. What a turnaround. <laughs> like, hey, there's a lady around. Awesome. W well, I guess we'll have to be nicer to you now that we know you're a girl. Gee, didn't take long for you to change your tune when you saw she was a girl, Asian. <laughs> Called out. Ah, more terminology. Oh, uh, whatever. Having a lady here at headquarters is sure gonna brighten things up, won't it? The headquarters of the Shinsengumi. It was located in the Mibu area, and it was where members lived and took their meals. Um... I wasn't entirely sure I believed that sentiment. Or if that was a good sentiment. I'm not sure if our headquarters are uh, up to standards for a lady, however. 
But then again, she's not a soldier, so we cannot expect to treat her as such. Then make her a page or something. Want an assistant, con want an assistant, Kondo? How about you, Sanon? An assistant to a samurai or noble, traditionally a young man. Am I gonna start to be in disguise while I'm here, I wonder? Hmm. Oh, come on now, Hijikata. It's your idea, so you can't just pawn her off on someone else. Oh, excellent. We can entrust Toshi with her. I'm not... I'm not going for that guy for another couple of roots, though, guys. He's like, what? I didn't want this. Well, there you have it, Hijikata. I hope you'll take good care of her. You sons of bitches. You can't just decide. I think they kind of just decided for you. You got an unwanted puppy. As I watched their back and forth, some of my earlier relief began to ebb away. And this is how the Shinsengumi had come to look after me. A lost little sheep, all alone. Should I click again? I'm always worried. Oh, there we go. Are we getting into a new chapter? Yes, it's February. All right. Should I, okay, we're fading. I wasn't sure if it was gonna like move apart and show a picture again. Not today. Mid-February, 1864. I slid the door open and met a breath of cool morning air. I don't know why, but looking outside the door, it looks like the outside is in black and white. <laughs> Clumps of thick clouds trundled silently over the city, an unusually strong wind driving them along. Trundled is a word you don't see very often. It's cold today. Ugh. I shivered a bit and grabbed a jacket from near the door to wrap around myself. A week had passed since I'd begun living in the headquarters of the Shinsengumi. I was given a room of my own, but they made it clear that I wasn't to roam freely. They weren't the best accommodations, but given how close I was to being murdered by them, instead I thought it best not to complain. Still, do I really need to dress like this all the time? <sighs> I stared at my feet on the cold floor. Are we going to see a picture of ourselves, or are we just... Oh, it's memory time. They'd given me temporary accommodations, but it wasn't without its strict conditions. The Shinsengumi will look after you, but we do not allow women to sim simply wander our doors. Yeah, I thought as much. The Shinsengumi keeping a woman here. If such rumors were to spread, tongues would begin to wag. Even worse, it may invite guests who are also searching for Kodo to come here looking for you. It is still up to speculation, however, whether or not he has been taken or attacked. So many unanswered questions hovering about, all the more reason to keep recklessness at a low. In other words, you need to keep this facade as a man. Do I make myself clear? Clear. His reasoning was sound. Perhaps, more than that, I knew he was concerned not only for the Shinsengumi, but also for the safety of my father and myself. I didn't have a choice regardless, but keeping this in mind made his orders more... palatable. I don't expect this to be an issue, but having a woman around could... disrupt morale, so to speak. For that reason, only we, the Shinsengumi's leadership, will know the truth of your situation. It is imperative for us to keep this under wraps, for there is no telling what becomes of rumors. I understand the situation. So, what should I do while I'm here? Nothing. You're gonna get a room, and you're gonna stay in it. Can't I at least train with my sword? Really? I could have sworn we decided she was going to be someone's page. Soji, keep your tongue in your mouth or I'll cut the fucking thing off. 
Damn! Did you kind of getting aggressive? <laughs> Sheesh! I don't piss him off, I guess. Before long, I'd been there for a week. I guess I don't have much of a choice. No sense in dwelling on what I can't do, after all. Although it was still a new sensation, I'd grown comfortable in dressing like a boy. Particularly the, feely, the feeling of wearing pants. Especially when it's cold out. Pants are great. I straightened up and touched the kodachi that Hijikata had given back to me. That is a nice sword. This was a familiar friend of mine, the blade by my hip stretching back to as far as I can recall. According to my father, this was an important heirloom passed down through the Yukimura clan. Why do I feel like this sword is going to be important? <laughs> as such, I was forced to take lessons in swordplay, making me well aware of what the blade was capable of. I had never cared much for weapons. Weapons hurt people. Which is an obvious factor, but it was more than that, at least for me. For as far back as I could remember, any wounds I suffered healed at an incredible rate. Small cuts would disappear overnight. Okay, we're getting more than I bargained for with this. As a child, I'd thought nothing of it, but as I grew older, I began to realize that I was... not quite normal. My father insisted it was a gift of the gods, but that I should tell no one of it. I didn't tell anyone, of course. I was afraid they would treat me like a monster if they knew. Ever since then, I'd done my best not to get hurt. I stayed as far away from blades as I could, and before I realized it, I developed a fear of them. My constant need for disguise was frustrating, but my condition left me more unsettled. Man. So what? is going on with her. Still. That wasn't the only thing on my mind. The rank and file soldiers treated me coldly. I'm not just imagining it, right? I learned having a private room was a privilege, even for captains. For a child to arrive and receive better treatment than their own captains? Hmm. No surprise, really, for the soldiers to hate me. True. I suppose I can't really blame them. I was enjoying the Shinsengumi's hospitality, and so I felt I should help them in some way, but I knew nothing of soldiers and their ways. I gave as much effort as possible, despite Hijikata's commands for me to remain in my room. How does one calm the lonely, restless mind? I think for the soldiers, whenever the captains or other officers would look out for me, it appeared as if they were giving me special treatment. They're just watching me. To make sure I kept my mouth shut, they took turns keeping watch over me. Any mistake on my part would cause huge trouble, so they were making an effort to keep me contained. Even if I could speak with the soldiers, what conversations could we share? Nothing? My only respite from any possibility of detection would be to stay alone. Again. All I wanted from this, though, was to find my father. Even though they'd promised to help me, keeping me locked here without the ability to leave was no better than being tied up. Just when it felt like I'd made some progress into my journey, my search was kept to a halt. Hmm. Perhaps I thought I could talk to Hijikata. If he would give me permission to look for my father. Oh, no. That's right. Hijikata just recently departed to Osaka. Well, if Hijikata's not here... I wasn't sure what to do. Well, we need to find Okita, so let's talk to someone. There we go. See what that gets us. I was hoping I would have an option to be like, who do you want to talk to? Oh well, we'll see what happens. Perhaps there would be someone in the inner courtyard to whom I could speak, I thought. I didn't want to be spotted by the soldiers, so I hid for a moment and scanned the area. Oh, good. Things were looking up. Were they? Hey! There's my boy. The only people in the courtyard were Okita and Saito. Good morning, Okita. Good morning, Saito. They showed no sign of surprise to my approach and turned lazily to greet me. 
Morning, Chizuru. Thinking hard on something, are we? H how did you guess? We didn't have to. You just told us. At any rate, if you have something to say, then out with it. Well... I didn't want to impose or complain, but... They had asked. I was hoping I could go look for my father soon. That's not possible. We don't have enough men to spare to keep an eye on you. You hadn't exactly left me any room for argument. Is there really nothing you can do? It's not like I want to go very far. Just walking around the city is enough. I'm very troublesome. Hmm. Well, I suppose we might be able to let you tag along when we go on our rounds. Your rounds? I must have worn a confused expression because Okita's eyes narrowed and he proceeded to warn me. This isn't just a stroll. While you're with us, you're in danger. If we make mistakes, our men die. If you don't want to get cut open by some angry Ronin, you need to be ready to fight back. Well, I do know a little of swordsmanship. I should be able to protect myself a little. Internally, though, I was frightened by the rounds. The last thing I wanted was to see another person die. I had seen enough of that to last a lifetime. <laughs> oh no. By the time we're done this. Eesh. I had to remind myself that fear couldn't rule me. No matter what, I had to find my father. Kyoto may be a dangerous place, but being paralyzed by fear would prevent me from ever finding him. In that case, allow me to test you. Let me see if that blade of yours is merely for show. What? I will hold back, but you need not. Come at me with your most powerful strike. But, but Is something wrong, Yukimura? Draw your blade, unless it is merely decoration. No, of course it's not. And I have taken lessons, I'm not lying. But... I can't! I can't attack you! If my hand were to slip and I cut or stab you, not only would you be injured, but you could die! <laughs> They're like... What? Oh boy. Just get on with it. Oh no, now we've made Soji laugh again. <laughs> oh, we're so troublesome. Excuse me, you don't have to laugh. Oh, that you could kill Saito. That's not funny. <laughs> oh man, this is too good. Of course I hadn't thought I could beat one of the captains of the Shinsengumi, but still. There's still a chance of someone getting hurt. If it's to help someone or to protect myself, I wouldn't think twice to draw my Kodachi. But right now... I mean... <sighs> Get on with it, girl. It's fine. So... This is to test my skills, right? Right? That's all we're doing, right? Oh. I wonder if the other option would have been good for, um... For Saito. Hmm. He would have been like, She cares about my well-being. Oh. Hmm. Seems like you are fast at understanding. Prove you can use your sword, and we may consider taking you with us on our rounds. If you are so concerned for my safety, then use your scabbard or the back of your blade. That's a good idea. See? Saito's the clever one. I looked down at my sword. Even with the scabbard or the back of the blade, a misplaced strike could break bones. Just, he's, he's a captain. He's fine. However, this was the opportunity I waited for. I don't want to miss this chance. You can do it. I straightened up and looked straight into Saito's cold, calm eyes. Let's go. I settled into a fighting position. Saito cocked his head slightly to one side and let out a small noise I took to be a laugh. Is my fighting position a little awkward? 
His stance stayed defensive, no sign of fear, despite the fact that I was clearly ready to attack. Did he intend to leave his sword sheathed? Oh man, are you a Yoda type fighter? That'd be so cool. I stopped the thought as it entered my mind. His words were to be trusted. Here I come. As I stepped forward, I let out a yell and lunged. Yeah! How that be? He like stops it with the palm of his uh, palm of his hand. The backside of my blade collided with the shoulder of a defenseless Saito, or so I thought. Ha! -ha. You hacked up, girl. Yes. Oh. I yield. <laughs> Hello. You didn't even see him draw the blade, did you, girl? Huh? In the blink of an eye, his face was only inches from mine, and I could feel the cold steel of his blade. This was the skill of a Shinsengumi captain. My body froze and sweat dri dripped down my neck. Your master should be proud. Your blade was not clouded. Um. You can see into the heart of one swordsmanship. You are blessed with a good teacher. He turned without another word, sheathed his sword, and began to walk away. Uh oh. I then noticed how wildly my heart was beating. What was that? I think he got taken to school. This is a pretty nice little blade. Looks old, though. Huh? I looked over at, uh, at Okito to see him holding my kodachi. I looked down at my hand where I had expected the sword to be. It was empty. I I'm sorry. Thank you for picking up my sword. He nodded and tossed the sword to me. I reached for it, but there was almost no strength left in my hands and I nearly dropped it. The blow of Saito's sword on my own had left my hands numb. That strength seemed almost inhuman. Can you teach me how to do that? You all right. Gave you a bit of a start, didn't he? Not surprising. Saito's a real EI master. Which is what? A martial arts technique where one strikes and finishes their opponent in one smooth motion from the starting position of the sword inside its sheath. Its focus is the quick draw. That sounds really impressive. Yes, I suppose I'm okay. But what's the eye? I felt like a bit of a fool asking, but they seemed to think it was a perfectly legitimate question. A technique where one draws the sword from its scabbard and strikes the enemy, all at once. You see how the blade points up? Yes. You wear that your katana just like my kodochi, then. The most common sword wielded by samurai during this period, it was also referred to as an uchi katana, and it was usually worn with the blade facing up. Mm, okay. That's right. Older katana were once hung facing blade down, but modern blades are worn at the waist, blade up. Normally, one waits until the blade is drawn, then flips the blade over and faces their opponent. And he could have easily taken my head with that blade. Had we faced an actual battle, I would have been dead sooner than I could prepare myself. In EI, the sword is drawn with one hand. Some think it diminishes the power of your swing. That's not a problem Saito has. It seems like he could easily finish an opponent with a single blow. Yep, Hajime's a real blood sport. He'd have finished you off right after he knocked the sword out of your hand. The only reason I survived that encounter was because Saito had never intended to kill me, thankfully. A thought that made me shiver. That's the eye, then. And from a true master of the art. 
It left me speechless, trembling from its power. A feeling of horror began to creep and coil itself around my heart. The outside appearance of the Shinsengumi did not reflect their deadliness. It mesmerized me to witness men who could be gentle, yet killers. Don't berate yourself. You have room to improve, but you have enough that we might take you along. Really? <laughs> I looked from Sayato to Okita. He gave me a smile and brought his hands together in polite applause. Thank you, thank you. They like me, I think. Well, look at that. Hajime himself gave you a pass. That's pretty amazing, you know. Then... that means... you can take me with you? Well, if the man who told you to stay here approves it, then yeah, you're good to go with us. Right. I had a feeling he was going to say something similar, so I simply nodded in agreement. I gotta wait for him to come back, I guess. You're just going to have to wait till Hijikata gets back from Osaka. Sorry. Oh, you don't need to apologize, Saito. It's alright. Saito looked at me for a beat, then turned away. I thought perhaps he looked to me with pity. Aw, such a sweet bean. We'll ask the commander for permission to take you on patrol. Aw, thanks. So, you think you can, you can wait just a little bit longer? If you want, we'll keep you company. Really? <laughs> Okita smirked and I couldn't tell if he was kidding or meant it, or what kind of company. Hmm. I turned to look up at the sky, watching the white clouds gently drift apart, perhaps a shy omen. At least I had made some progress in my search, I told myself, however little. The wind had pushed the clouds off of Kyoto, and the brilliant blue they'd hidden sparkled above, 